UN Secretary General's message, which was also so strong. I wish to also thank His Excellency, the Ambassador of Ireland, for his strong message and support. Many thanks, Excellency, for being a good friend of Rwanda. Allow me to also take this opportunity to thank all the schools and their students who have performed this evening and those who have been proactive in researching on the genocide against the Tutsi and producing artworks that entertained and informed many during this morning exhibition session. And I was there, trust me, I was so moved by their paintings, by their knowledge about the 1994 genocide. So thank you so much all. And uh, I wish to let you know that this year marks the 30th commemoration of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda under the theme Remember, Unite, Renew. On this day, Rwanda and the international community commemorate when the genocide against the Tutsi began in my country. The commemoration of genocide is a global framework to honor the victims comfort survivors and pay tribute to Rwandans who stopped the genocide and liberated the country. It provides an opportunity for the Rwandans and global community to stand together and draw lessons from Rwanda's tragic history with the goal of fighting genocide ideology, hate speeches, and preventing future genocides around the world. For Rwanda this time, this 30th commemoration serves as a call to action for the younger generation to reflect on the lives lost, the sacrifices made, to rebuild our country and their role in preserving unity. Through educational talks, creative arts, and community events, Rwandans will endeavor to address the past, recognize collective trauma, and work proactively to prevent the transmission of harmful narratives to the next generation. Excellencies, distinguished guests, after the world had said never again, should the genocide happen after the Holocaust, the world has watched without much concern the bloody unfolding of the genocide against the Tutsi in my country. From April to July 1994, in which more than one million Tutsi were brutally slaughtered, including my family members. Indeed, I lost my dad. I lost my four siblings, including my bigger sister and my three brothers. I lost all my uncles. I lost all my aunties and their children. But I'm here today to tell you the story of a new Rwanda. The genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda was systematically prepared. Then 10,000 Tutsi were killed every day, three consecutive months. In fact, we lost 10% of our population over the course of three months in 1994. Because the government of that time said the only way to save the country was to kill all the Tutsi 
as they were all marked for extermination. That was the only reason why one million Tutsi were exterminated. Allow me to inform you that even since 1959, so many Tutsi were driven into exile, including the family of His Excellency Poro Kagame, the current president of Rwanda, who was at that time four years only. Those Tutsi who flew the country grew up in refugee camps, stateless and forgotten, with constant reminders that they belonged nowhere. They were even being told that Rwanda was full and that they would never go home. And that is the reason why a group of Rwandan refugees who were abroad decided to start the liberation struggle of my country in 1990. Those who stayed in Rwanda, including my family and I, we were discriminated in schools, jobs, our houses were burnt, our property rooted, and so many Tutsi were killed since 1959. The killing machine was the most painful ever in human history. Victims were hacked with sharp machetes, nailed clubs, pregnant mothers tortured by opening wombs with knives, burying the victims alive, babies smashed on walls, and even killers used to eat the hearts of the victims. I saw some of those atrocities with my own eyes. Rape was used as a weapon of genocide. Hutu extremists released from hospitals, patients suffering from AIDS to infect Tutsi women. As a consequence, victims of this rape and their newborn were infected with HIV and AIDS. As the dust is settled, the land of a thousand hills was left with the hundreds of thousands of helpless and hopeless orphans. Destitute widows, a collectively traumatized nation, and a sharply divided people. First, with the prospect of defeat by the Rwandese Patriotic Front, the perpetrators of the genocide emptied the country of all movable materials, destroyed anything they were not able to carry, and fled the country. We were even expected to repay the money the genocidal government has borrowed to purchase machetes and guns to kill Tutsis. Rwanda instantly became one of the most broken places on earth. My country became a hopeless and a failed state. Indeed, after the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, as my good friend, the ambassador of Ireland mentioned, Rwanda was totally destroyed. And there was no hope that we would be able to rebuild it. So what the top leadership of my country did was to lay a strong foundation for political, social, and economic transformation. And that's why today Rwanda is the safest country in Africa. That 
30 years later, the genocide perpetrated against the Tutsi in Rwanda is still fresh in the minds of those who witnessed it live and still bear the trauma of the untold suffering inflicted to them by their killers. As we, the survivors, struggle to live side by side with the scars of the physical and psychological wounds. Speaking at the big audience who attended the commemoration event held in Chigari on 7th April 2024, His Excellency Poro Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, has a strong message to the survivors. I quote, to the survivors among us, we are in your debt. We ask you to do the impossible by carrying the burden of reconciliation on your shoulders. And you continue to do so. Continue to do the impossible for our nation every single day, and we thank you. As the years pass, the descendants of survivors increasingly struggle with their quiet loneliness of longing for relatives they never met or never even got the chance to be born. Today, we are thinking of you as well. Our tears flow inward, but we carry on as a family, end of quote. Excellencies, dear friends, by reflecting on the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, we bow our heads to the brave soldiers of the then Rwandese Patriotic Army, which was then led by the current president of Rwanda, His Excellency Poro Kagame, and its political wing, the Rwandese Patriotic Front. They made a sacrifice of the sweetest part of their life, gave their young ideals and fought courageously the bloody regime that was committing the genocide against the Tutsi. They also stood up and said no to the international communities in action in fighting the genocidal regime. Indeed, the world turned a blind eye while the victims were being hacked to death by their killers. Today, the world should come together to heal the wounds left by the world's negligence in front of a perishing community. The absent international community will take again a very long time in calling the genocide against the Tutsi by its name. Wasting time in unnecessary and time-buying debates on how and what otherwise the genocide be called till today. Thank you very much for attending our event. It is the safest country in Africa, and that uh, there is a uh, very conducive investment environment. Zero tolerance to corruption. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I hope you now have some good information about my country. I hope you know what we went through and uh, how we are trying to live in our I know about Thank you. Commemoration Rwanda, the genocide
उसको तीस साल आज हो गए हैं और एक बहुत दर्दनाक घटना हुई थी जहाँ पूरे विश्व ने देखा था और ज़्यादा कोई लोग आ, आ नहीं पाए थे उस समय आगे और आज तीस साल बाद हम सेलिब्रेट कर रहे हैं इसका मतलब है कि हमको आगे आना है एक दूसरे की सहायता करनी है और ऐसा भविष्य में ना हो उसके लिए हमें एक्शन लेना है और उसकी अवेयरनेस करना है उसके बावजूद भी जैसे यूक्रेन में इतना प्रॉब्लम चल रहा है युद्ध हो रहे मैम तो आखिर यहीं से सब के लिया होता तो ये युद्ध नहीं होता यूक्रेन वाला और ये लोग नहीं समझते हैं कैसा एक ऐसा स्ट्रॉन्ग मैसेज आप देशों के लिए दें जैसे भारत शांति चाहता है इस तरह से बाकी देश भी शांति बनाए रखें देखिए रुवांडा स्पेसिफिक का मैं एग्जांपल लेती हूँ यूक्रेन का अभी चल रहा है युद्ध रशिया के साथ हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि वो युद्ध खत्म हो हर तरह से लेकिन रुवांडा का एक एग्जांपल हम आप हमारे सामने है कि जब ये युद्ध खत्म हुआ जब ये जेनोसाइड खत्म हुआ उसके बाद महिलाओं ने आगे आकर कमान संभाली रुवांडा में सिक्सटी से ज़्यादा पॉपुलेशन महिलाओं की उन्होंने लीडरशिप पोजिशन ली और वहाँ पर शांति बहाली की और वहाँ पर प्रोग्रेस हुई तो मुझे लगता है कि यहाँ यूक्रेन रशिया के मामले में भी अगर महिलाओं का जो प्राथमिकता दी जाए प्राथमिकता दी जाए उनको आगे लाया जाए उनको उनको नेगोशिएशन्स में इंक्लूड ज़्यादा किया जाए तो प्रोबेबली थिंग्स विल बी इजियर क्योंकि एक महिलाओं का जो होता है टेम्परामेंट होता है एडजस्टमेंट का मिल करके रहने का तो उसमें एक एक एंगल वो एक्सप्लोर किया जाना चाहिए विश्व की सभी प्लेयर्स में मिल करके क्योंकि रवांडा का एक बहुत पॉजिटिव एग्जाम्पल हमारे सामने थैंक यू वेरी मच बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हमारे साथ डॉक्टर नवीन भी जुड़ चुके हैं तो नवीन जी क्या कहना चाहेंगे आप 30 साल के बाद जो है ये सेलिब्रेशन हो रहा है और 30 साल पहले जो इन्होंने जिस तरह से झेला है देश वो तो कैसा आपको लग रहा है कि इस तरह से ये भी सबक नहीं सीख पाए और यूक्रेन में फिर वैसी स्थिति बनी आखिर क्या वजह है क्यों नहीं लोग मान रहे हैं मैं कहना चाहूँगा कि इस देश के पास सबसे बड़ी चीज़ है यूनिटी और स्ट्रेंथ और लोग उस डायरेक्शन में काम कर रहे हैं तो वहाँ इस तरह की जो जो सिचुएशन यूक्रेन में है या अंडर कंट्री में वो यहाँ नहीं होगी क्योंकि यहाँ की जो मिलेट्रीज हैं यहाँ के फोर्सेस हैं वो बहुत डिसिप्लिनरी हैं और वो बहुत यूनिटी के साथ काम कर रहे हैं तो होपिंग बेस्ट कि ऐसा ना हो नहीं यहाँ नहीं होगा ये तो तय है क्योंकि यहाँ पर लोकतंत्र है लेकिन जैसे इस देश ने जो झेला तीस साल पहले वहीं से हमें सब सीखना चाहिए पूरे वर्ल्ड को करेक्ट उसके बाद भी यूक्रेन में इस तरह की स्थिति बनी आखिर क्यों ये बेसिकली कह सकते हैं डिक्टेटरशिप और लोगों की मानसिकता सबसे बड़ी चीज़ वही कहेंगे और आतंकवादी टूरिज्म एक सबसे बड़ा चीज़ यही है बिल्कुल कि जो पैसे हैं वो आतंकवादी संगठन और ये सारे गाए जा रहे हैं हाँ, लगते हाँ, हैं इसी से ये पन पता है हाँ और यही सब चीज़ें इन चीज़ों को बढ़ावा दे रही हैं अगर हम रियल इनकम और सारी चीज़ को पॉजिटिवली लें और करेक्ट डायरेक्शन में कोई भी इनकम आ रही है तो इन सब चीज़ों को ये बढ़ावा नहीं देगी तो बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपने नवीन जी इस तरह से बात रखी है और आम जनता समझेगी इसको सभी देश समझेगी थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू